Hello and welcome to another Matplotlib tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to smooth lines out. Now there's a few different ways to do it. This is going to be the most basic both uh, scripting wise and also um, processing. It'll be the least intensive. However, it isn't necessarily always going to be the best option and I'll show you why. So let's say you have um, a simple graph and for this we're going to um, we're gonna obviously need a few imports. So we're at matplotlib.pyplot as plt and really that's all we really need. So now um, let's say you want, let's say we want to do plot uh, or let's define our x and y variables first and we want to do something like one two three four and then y we want to apply one two eight twelve okay so next we want to do plt dot plot and we want to plot x and y and then plot dot show and this should be everything i think just for this quick basic graph so sure enough here is the basic graph now let's say you had a lot more plots or something and you really wanted to make this smooth, right? You don't want this jagged edge, the jagged edge. There's a very quick way about doing this, and the quick way that I know of anyways, uh, comes from a download of SciPy. So what you'll want to do is come over to your uh, favorite search engine, which is probably Google, and you'll want to do a SciPy download here. Download, let me move this over so you can see it. Just SciPy download, and then the first option for you will probably be the SourceForge.net. Click on that, and then you'll click on this download um, for your uh, for your computer. Now, if you're not on obviously, if you're on like Mac OS or you don't have Python 2.7 or whatever, um, first of all, get Python 2.7, and then uh, Windows 32. You know, depending on whatever your operating system is, you might want to pick something else. But just make sure you get SciPy. Um, you know, you're getting this for Python. Once you have that and you've installed it, I mean, we've gone through a gazillion uh, installations, so I'm not going to waste your time with that. Pause the video or something, install it, and uh, continue on. So now what we want to do, um, once you've got SciPy downloaded, we want a couple more things. First of all, we want to import NumPy or NumPy as NP, and then we want to do from SciPy dot interpolate import spline. Now once we've got spline, what we want to do is we're going to convert X and Y to a specific NumPy array, so NP dot array. Uh, parentheses, closing parentheses, and move it here, close this, and this is also going to be an MP array. Now the next thing we want to do is define new versions of X and Y. So we'll say X uh, smooth equals um, NP dot lin space, and then what you want to do is you want to have X min and then uh, X dot max and then 300 we'll say and then y smooth will be equal to the spline of uh, x y and then finally x um, smooth so it kind of uses basically what it's doing is you've got it's going to for sure be plotting your x and y variables like they will be plotted right but then what we want to do is plot this X smooth line through those plots. So um, the next thing we want to do now is, oh, I guess we'll just change this. So we want to now plot X smooth and Y smooth. Save that, and I believe that's all we have to do to change. And now when we have this graph, we have a much smoother um, chart of the data. Now let me show you why this isn't always the best option. Let's also apply the original X and Y. X, Y. Save that, run it. And here is the original X, Y. The green line is our original one. So as you can see, every plot is indeed covered. And this is almost kind of like a best fit line or something. Or not a best fit line, that's a horrible word for this. 
Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a trend line almost, I guess would be maybe a term you would use, but it's not even a trend line because from here to here, data never really dropped, right? But yet this line is showing that, oh, we had a decrease in data, but no, we didn't because, well, we just didn't, <laughs> right? But what this kind of reminds me of is like in paint, um, I wonder, let me just pull up a paint really quick and show you guys how, what this reminds me of. In paint, you can choose this little squiggly line, you make a line, and say you want, you know, this to be, a, or like this, you know, a plot to this, and then you want it to, hold on, let me make it smaller, actually, hold on, go away. You want it to go from here, and then you want it to connect and go to like a plot over here, even though it like went up, you know, or, or maybe didn't go up as much, when we're done with this line, and we'll say we draw a line to here, oops, I screwed up. Now, in order to get from here to here, uh, in a decent looking way, you really need to pull, wow, what happened? Oh my goodness. You really need to pull this way up like that basically to make a smooth transition from this plot to this plot, yet you've uh, actually shown that data maybe was higher than this plot, which isn't the case. So uh, anyway, and then if we were to continue, this is the other problem, now you can see where data might be lower is from this plot to this plot, in order to make that transition a smooth transition, you have to really do something like that, right? And so really the old plot was like here, and now you're showing that data was actually under that old plot. And so that's basically what Spline is doing for you, is it's creating a nice, you know, smooth line. But in the creation of that smooth line, in order to make that smooth line happen for you, they have to kind of um, exceed various data limitations that so on your chart it might look like something it never was so for example you know obviously like we were saying here's a point where it exceeded that limitation we never actually got data that low whereas here it wasn't as big of an issue because um, this was the plot and then we went to this plot and we never actually exceeded any limitation on the way from this plot to this plot so in some scenarios it can be okay but in um, quite a few scenarios it isn't okay and, and probably in the scenario where you're trying to smooth data out it's probably not the best option um, so for example let me pause the video and I'll add a lot more data to this and we'll see what it looks like so now just one more thing to further exaggerate this I added some more data and it's a growing data set and so on so we'll save that we'll run this and now here is our new chart so as you can see um, you know to start it was okay I wonder if we can zoom in though is this, and then all of a sudden our data just explodes. So to start, it's actually relatively um, decent, although let me zoom in further. Um, yeah, so like when you've got data that's doing, uh, what I think is generally gonna work out here is when you have increasing data, right? Or steady decreasing data, either way will work out. But as soon as you start uh, whipsawing, that's when it starts to get really messy, <laughs> right? So like here is an example of that, where all of a sudden we've got a, an apparent data plot as high as 1,200. <laughs> we never had anything like that here, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, that's this is an exaggerated example that I just whipped up for us um, that shows where this can go wrong. Um, so the remedy to this, the way that you should be plotting data if you want to smooth data out is actually with more of like a moving average. That will solve a lot of your problems and that's how you know most people will do it. Most people aren't going to do something like this because this is severely distorted data. So with that, I'm going to conclude this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, moving averages in graphs. And uh, so anyways, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.